What's up, sweethearts? <laughs> are you, how are y'all you doing? I was trying to think of the uh, creepiest way I could start the podcast, and that's um, what I came up with. What up? What up? What's up, sweeties? <laughs> how are all my honey little honey bunches of oats doing out there? Oh God, this is making me feel sick. <clears throat> What's up? What's good? It's me, Cody here, chilling. Uh, a little update on the weather. Uh, haven't started the podcast with the weather in a little while. It's sunny. It's uh, it's it's nice. It's it's been getting. <laughs> Why did I just say it like that? It's nice. It's um. It's been getting a little. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what? My window's open. I don't like when my window's open because um, I feel like people are listening. I feel like maybe. Colby or Adam listening to me right now, even though they're probably at work because they have real jobs and I don't. This is what I do. I said, sit, sit here talking to myself. So I'm going to close the window real quick and then I'll be right back. <clears throat> What's up, sweeties? Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been nice. It's been, it's been cool and crisp. Do you know what I'm saying by that? Do you know what I mean? You know when it just starts to become fall um, and... It just, it's crisp in the morning. It's cool, but it's not too cold, but it's like you're a little bit chilly. You know, you got to bundle up. You got to bundle the covers over yourself and then you you might go outside for a coffee or something and it just, it just bites you a little bit, but not too hard. You know, it's a gentle, it's a gentle bite. That's, (laughs) that's what I love about fall weather. Just the gentle bite. Um, and it's been like that over the past like week or so. And I've been just digging it. I guess gives i don't know make it makes me uh really happy for some reason i just uh, i get in the best mood when um when the cold bites me just a little bit <laughs> continuing with the creepy theme um it how are you guys doing i'm doing good i uh what what did i do oh you know what actually i want to start the podcast off with a little story from yesterday this happened yesterday and i thought it was really funny so uh, on the weekend, as you maybe you've heard, I posted a weekend edition with Spock and Noel. Spock is a friend of mine. He's a DJ signed to Slay All, which I think is the same management company as Getter. And he's friends with Getter and Nick, and um, I've, I've been friends with him for a little while. And so I got him on the podcast. It was really funny. But for the first like 10 minutes, we talked about um, these giant fucking dildos called dragon dicks. They're just like fictitious dicks. Basically, they're just fake cocks. Like, just imagine what a dragon's dick would look like, and this is what those that company makes. They just design these giant fantasy dicks that girls, I guess, can fuck themselves with, and they sell them online. They're big dildos that are all multicolored and, you know, triple-dicked and giant, you know what I'm saying? Just, like, weird-looking dragon dicks, basically. Um, self-explanatory. So we talked about that for like 10 minutes on the podcast because it was really funny and we were just going through all the different types of dragon dicks because they they got a lot of different ones. And so if you, if you didn't listen to the episode on Sunday, go ahead and listen to that so that you know what I'm talking about. But anyways, the story is this. The story is that I was walking back yesterday from the gym with Colby and we're walking down uh, um, a street around here and all of a sudden I hear my name. Someone screams my name. And I uh, look to the right and it's this girl in her car and she has her window down. And at first I was like, oh, maybe I know her. I don't know. Colby was like, do you know that girl? And I was like, no, but it all happened like in a split second. She just yells my name, stops her car. I look over and she just cranks what it was that she was listening to. Like, you know, all the way, the volume all the way up. And it was my podcast and it was this episode. But the problem was it was right as I said, dragondicks.com. That's the moment that she decided to just crank it to fucking 11. And everyone at the intersection looked, which was bad enough, okay? Someone yelling, Cody! And then just playing my voice at full volume saying, dragondicks.com. That was bad enough. The worst part was, on the other side of the street, was a elementary school where it's a field full of kids playing. It was where she decided to to crank the volume, as I said, dragondicks.com. And then, so just imagine that. She just cranks it. It's just like in a split second, 
I'm basically screaming at myself, dragondicks.com. There's an elementary school full of kids that are like screaming now. They weren't, but I mean, I imagine some of them were slightly scarred, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it will affect them later in life or something. You know, they'll be sitting around dinner one day as an old person. Honey, can you pass the salt? Wait, dragondicks.com. What the fuck? <laughs> Who knows? I'll never know because as soon as it happened, she just got so embarrassed that she just drove off really fast. And that was that. And Colby was like, did you know that girl? What was she listening to? And I was like, that was my podcast. That was me. That just said dragondicks.com super loud in the middle of the street. But it was also, uh, for as for as weird as it was, um, it was also kind of cool. It's kind of cool. What are the odds that someone listening to my podcast would drive by me? That's cool. That's really cool. That, that's how I know like enough people are listening now where like that shit could happen sometimes. And it has as of yesterday. So that was great. Um, thanks. Shout out to you, Dragon Dicks girl. Um, you scarred a bunch of kids probably, uh, which I mean, you shouldn't, you know, don't feel bad about it. But like, just know that that's a thing now that's going to weigh you down. You probably scarred some kids. They're going to go home and they're going to ask their, <laughs> they're going to ask their parents, mommy, daddy, what's a dragon dick? And the mom's like, oh, well, I don't know. I guess we're going to have to have the talk with him. I guess this is it. Honey, when a male dragon and a female dragon love each other very much. <laughs> honey, when a, when, a, when a woman loves, when a woman wants to fuck a fictitious giant beast, they purchase something called a dragon dildo. Now... These are like dicks, but just, just a whole nother ball game. They're like if dicks had dicks. The, the, the big dick would be the dragon dick. I don't know. I don't know. It was just a funny story. Shout out to that, to that chick. Um, and uh, if you ever drive by me listening to my podcast, make sure you let me know about it. I like when people say they listen to my podcast. I fuck with it. Um, Another thing that happened in, in Venice, this isn't really that funny of a story, but fuck it. It actually, it actually is funny because it's, it's one of my biggest nightmares of living in Venice, and it happened. Now, when I say that, maybe you think, like, uh, what, you're scared of getting murdered or something? And yes, that is a, a concern of mine. That's a concern if you live anywhere, getting murdered, right? You never want to get murdered. I think murder generally, being murdered is a bad thing, right? This is what this podcast is all about, is just coming to conclusions like that, epiphanies. Murder is bad, especially when you're getting murdered. That's going to go on a shirt. Um, so yeah, scared of getting murdered generally, but the second most thing I'm scared of living in Venice is being sprayed by the water in Venice. So like, you know, in the intersections, especially the one, the one that I'm talking about is the one under the fucking Venice sign. There's always this pool of fucking just the grossest brown, uh, just disease water. You know, I just gross, I don't even know to, how to explain this without offending someone. But, you know, disease water, it's just awful. And it's just, it's just right by, it just rests right off the curb, right where the dude, I was talking about last time, the dude that was pissing onto the street. He was pissing basically into this puddle. It lies right there, right? Or the liquid that comes off the street just, you know, flows down to this puddle. And so you stand by it and you're always like, ah, you know, you know those like movies where someone gets like sprayed by water, you know, a taxi drives by in New York and spray someone with, with like a, you know, spray someone with, with a puddle of water and they're like, ah, bummer or whatever. I was like, what if that, what if that ever happened to us? We're standing right here. And a car comes by and sprays this piss water all over us. And then we get herp, her, her, I don't know. I was going to say hepatitis, but herpes at the same time. Herpetitis. What if we get herpetitis from this fucking water because someone sprays it, right? And we kind of laugh it off because we're like, the chances of a car driving that close to the curb is pretty low, I think, generally. And it's never even come close to happening before. So uh, it's always just kind of like, ha ah, what if we get herpetitis? Ha ha. Ha ha. What if that happened? Ha. But, but, now, I'm sure you guys are no, I'm sure you guys know what I'm going to say happened to me. That's right. I got murdered. No, I'm kidding. I 
fucking got sprayed by this water. It was me and Alex. Alex was in town visiting last weekend or last week at some point. I think it was Wednesday or something. We're standing there. Oh, no, actually, this happened the week before. I realize it's been two weeks now since I've done a podcast just by myself. Um, so sorry about that if that is something that you're concerned about. I don't know. People seem to like the ones that I do with guests a little bit more. And I know I said this last time, and people comment. A lot of people of you commented, and they were like, no, we like the ones where you, that you do by yourself. So if you're one of those people, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I like doing the ones by myself, so I'm just going to keep doing them. But um, uh, what now what the fuck was I even saying? This is why I need a guest. <laughs> What was I talking about? Yeah, so Alex was in town. This was a couple of weekends ago. And we were standing there on the curb and just talking, minding our own business. And this fucking bus or something, car, drove by, went right through the puddle. He went through the deepest part. He hit that shit. He hit that bitch head on as hard as he could hit it, this puddle. And he was going like 60 and just absolutely sprayed herpetitis water directly into our mouths. No, I'm kidding. It didn't go into the mouth. But it hit both of our pants. Soaked our pants. Soaked our pants with this murky, brownish, yellowish herpetitis water. And it was one of the grossest moments of my entire life. I didn't know what to do. We were both like, just like, and we had to just carry on because we were like in the middle of something. We had to still go to the store. And our pants like, like smelled. There's probably shit in there. There's probably just the like just syringes in there. Oh God, I can't even tell you how. I can't even just fully describe how gross this puddle is to you. But we got fucking sprayed in the mouth. No, not in the mouth. But could you imagine how gross that would be? Oh man, <laughs> crazy the shit that happens in Venice. I don't care if you're sick of me talking about Venice. It's it's the only place I spend time. So this is the only place where shit happens to me. Dragondicks.com, herpetitis puddle, puddles. Pubbles? What's a puddle? I don't know. Yeah, it was a good couple weeks, though. It was a good couple weeks. I Like I said, I haven't posted an episode by myself in a long time. I, uh, you know, Kelsey, my girlfriend, was on the last episode with me, and that shit has, like, almost 100,000 views now on YouTube, which is crazy. I was, like, so nervous to post that because I was like, I don't want people talking shit or whatever. But generally, you guys were pretty fucking supportive, and you seem to like her way more than you like me, which I guess I was expecting. Honestly, anytime I do a podcast with anyone else, it's always like, hey, why don't you just, why, is it, why don't you just... Let that person host your podcast and then you just not be on it. I love love Insanely Chill with Cody Co, but would rather someone else host it and you just be far away from it as that person who's recording it. And so, you know, generally the comments were like, why don't you just ha- let Kelsey and Noel take over? <laughs> but it was great. She's a natural and we had a good episode and that shit straight up has almost 100,000 views now on YouTube, which is fucking crazy when you think about the fact that last year at this time, yeah, last year at this time, I was on my main channel, couldn't get more than thirty to 50,000 views, I don't think. Right? Yeah, I think that's right. And now, like, it's just crazy. I mean, it's amazing. I, I definitely appreciate the fact that you guys are fucking with it, but it's just crazy to think about that, that now I post an hour-long video on my th- on my second channel and it gets almost 100,000 views. So thank you guys. Keep keep listening if you're a Chodester Pod fan bay pizza as fuck goals as shit. If you're one of those, if you're a pizza as boot, pizza pizza as boot, if you're a fan bay as pizza, pizza, pizza pod, if you're a pizza pod, I appreciate you very much. And uh, I, I fuck with the fact that y'all are still listening. And uh, we're gonna keep it going. We're gonna invent new segments. I actually kind of thought of a new segment today. I thought of this. Let me know what you think of this. Don't steal it, though. If you steal it, I'm going to be fucking pissed. I'm going to be peeved. This is, this is, uh, I should have all of you, this is an audible NDA right now. By listening to this, this is like an email signature. You know an email signature? You like open up the email and it's, it's like a fucking contract in the bottom of the email, you know, that's like already, already makes you feel like a criminal. It's like, by opening this email, you forfeit all rights to copy it and all rights are reserved to the sender of the email. And you're like, dog, this is, it's just an email. Why am I, why have I already 
I already feel like I'm guilty just by opening this email. Like, I feel like I saw something I shouldn't have seen. Like, this is fucking Edward Snowden sending me a fucking, you know, uh, fucking, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, classified document. Classified. How did I forget that? Edward Snowden, Snowden is sending me a classified document about, I don't know, Donald Trump's obsession with feet or something. And I feel like I'm, the FBI is going to break in my door already when you send me an email signature. There's, the worst is when people that you're like, your friends send them to you. You know, it's like, yeah, dude, like meet you there at six. It's like, hey, you want to play paddle tennis? Yeah, meet you there at six. This email is classified and protected by the FBI. If you copy this, you will go straight to Guantanamo Bay. You're like, what the fuck, man? This is, we're just talking about paddle tennis. Um, so anyways, this is, a, this is an audio version of that. So by listening to this, idea you forfeit all rights to copy it and to clone it or whatever you want to do so basically what i want to do now that i've got that out that out of the way now that i've made you all feel like criminals what i want to do is hold on a second ah drinking a little bit of the coffee here um a <laughs> little bit of a coffee it, it really is a little bit of a coffee. It's just, it's just like the last few sips, but I'm savoring them because this is my last cup of the day. I drank one more, and I'm going to start feeling anxious as fuck. I'm going to start shivering. Anyway, sorry. Um, so my idea is I want to like basically take a guest, maybe Noel or someone, and have a list of topics, but then record separately what we, what we each think about those topics, and then splice them together. Like, you know, back to back to back to back. So it'll be like laundromats and then it'll be me talking or like maybe it's like a, you know, maybe it's like a better, like more like longer form version of like a best friend tag on YouTube. You know, that's shit where it's like, what would my friend say about this? Or what would my girlfriend say about this? And then they have to guess. And then the girlfriend's like, no, what are you talking about? My favorite fruit is snozberries. And you're like, oh, I thought it was oranges, babe. You know, that type of video. Maybe it'll be something like that. But I just think it'd be funny if it would just like, it was just like uh, pogo sticks. And then like each of you has like a separate funny anecdote about that, that you record separately and then you splice them together. So like back to back, maybe you have the same opinion or might, you might have complete opposite opinions. But it'd be funny to hear that knowing, you know, knowing that the other person didn't know what you were going to say, right? I don't know. I haven't really fleshed it out yet. This is just kind of, a weird little idea I had this morning. Um, Speaking of things that I haven't fleshed out yet, if you didn't hear on the last episode, um, because you don't listen to the weekend edition for some reason, or I don't know, maybe you're just not a true pizza pod bay fam goals, but um, we, Noel and I have a mixtape coming out December 15th. We announced it. December 15th, Tiny Meat Gang mixtape. We know what it's going to be called, but uh, we're not saying that yet. Um, because it's not for sure, but December 15th, probably five songs, little EP. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and I'm pumped. I'm fucking pumped, but it's like, it's one of those things where, um, we really, it's really going to take a lot of work to, to have it done by then, which is awesome. 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 But it's a little bit intimidating when you start a creative project like this. I feel like it's just weird. I'm still still really learning how to tackle creative projects, if that makes any sense. At my job, you have project managers. They're only, or, you know, as a software engineer, you usually work for someone or work with someone that's a project manager. So you have someone whose entire job it is, is to stay organized and make sure deadlines are being met and that features are being written, right? And as an engineer, normally you don't really have to worry about that stuff. You just have to you just have your deadline and you got to hit it, right? So it's like, I need these features done by this, okay? I know the code that it takes to make these things happen or I know how long it's going to take me to figure it out. I have to have this feature done by Friday. I'm going to have it done by Friday, right? The project manager's job is to make sure the whole project is done by the deadline. So that was like the world that I came from where it was like, and even, even setting myself goals when I was writing my own apps, which I know is a creative project, but it's also like, I don't know. Sometimes I would just be like, I want to work on this and I would work on it whenever I needed to. Right. But like something like this, where it's like, we've never really, we've come out with three songs now. We know what it takes to create a 
a song, I guess, but like not what it takes to create like an actual musical project where we actually like think through all of the songs. Very, you know, normally we'll just go in the studio and be like, eh, fuck it, let's just rap about, um, I don't know, rap about fucking, you know, just stupid farts and dicks and whatever. Farts and dicks and whatever for however long. And then we have a song, right? But now it's going to be like, now we want to think it through and actually like come up with a real project. So we, now we got to set ourselves deadlines. We got to have fucking due dates for songs and whatnot. And uh, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I'm fucking pumped. I'm pumped enough where I can feel like, I feel confident that I can announce this that we're going to hit that release date. But who knows? I also uh, think I'm going to Israel on December 14th. So um, that might conflict a little bit. But we'll see, man. We'll see. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I know I've said that 600,000 times now, but I'm actually pumped to have a fucking real... It's always been my dream to do music, and now fucking doing it. And it's sick. So the lesson here is murder sucks, right? Murder is bad, especially if you're the one that's getting murdered. But also, if you want to do something, go out and do it. Boom. It's a real lesson. If you want to get murdered, go out and get murdered. No, no, don't. I was trying to combine the two <laughs> lessons, but it didn't really it didn't really work out at all. Oh, here's a fucking funny thing. So I got a DM the other day. I wanted to read this. Wait, sorry, I'm just <laughs> All right, so this guy goes. This is so funny, dude. This is so funny. First of all, he starts off and he goes, read this, it's hilarious, which, you got me, I'm doing it. But I'm reading it because I want to read this, not because you told me to read it. Read this, it's hilarious. Me and my girlfriend do long distance, and I listen to your podcast driving up and down to her. Last night, I was listening to the podcast about the dildos and stuff. Anyway, I was driving along, and I get pulled over by the police. He comes up to my window and says he's just doing a routine random stop to make sure everything's okay. And as soon as he said that, you said on your podcast, fucking a dragon dildo. There was a pause and he made me get out of the car. He thought I was drunk and breathalyzed me. So yeah, thanks for almost getting me arrested. Holy fuck. That's number one, hilarious. And also not because you said it was, because I just genuinely think it's hilarious. Um, number two, also very similar to the story that I just told about the shit that happened to me yesterday that I didn't even remember. What, like, I didn't even remember your DM, what was in it. I just read it real quick when I was like, this is really funny. Again, because I thought it was funny, not because you said it was funny. But I screenshot it and I was like, I got to read this on the next podcast. And I forgot that the shit that happened to me yesterday was very similar. Why is this podcast ruining people's lives? I don't know. The weekend edition with Spock and Noel has scarred an elementary school full of children and almost got someone arrested because the police thought he was drunk. <laughs> I guess that's what this... I guess that's what it is. Like, what the fuck was the cop thinking? Like, yo, you gotta be drunk if you if you're listening to shit like this. <laughs> that's 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 what state of mind you have to be in when listening to my podcast. The cop heard one phrase that I said, and you just assumed the guy was drunk because there's no way you'd listen to that shit sober. But I'm sure all you pot surveys understand. You guys know what? You guys know what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to talk about dragon dicks getting murdered. Herpy or what did I say? Herpetitis water. Herpetitis water sounds like like something fucking creation in LA would 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 is it creation? Creation, that's what it is. Um I'm thinking about the rapper. Creation is like a juice store, right? They have all types of juice and it's like, ah, like, you know, it's like guava and beet juice. And you're like, oh, that's weird. And they're like, no, but it cleans it. They all have like weird names. Like one's the, one of them is the pipe cleaner, which I guess is just a nice way of saying this is going to make you shit. You know, I don't know what it just makes girls comfortable with buying it because it's called pipe cleaner instead of will give you diarrhea. You know? And uh, it feels like herpetitis water is something creation would sell. <laughs> all, the, all the LA girls post spin class. Have you had the herpetitis water from, from creation? It is so good to die for. 
What's in it? I think it's just herpes and hepatitis sourced from Venice puddles, sourced from the puddles of Venice beach. Yum. Yeah, it's actually really, really good for you. It's like what they have like charcoal at a lot of like juice places, charcoal juice. Like it's like black activated charcoal or whatever. It's apparently it's good for you, but it's like, it's one of those things where you just, you're like activated charcoal, never in my goddamn life. Would I ever think that I would end up drinking charcoal? Charcoal is like what you burn. It's, it's, a, it's a resource. How can this be good for you? How can you activate charcoal and then all of a sudden, oh, it's good for the system. Really? Because I'm pretty sure we burn it to like run things. For energy, we burn it. And it's like destroying the, 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 the ozone layer. But no, if you activate it, it's good for you. Oh, okay, so gotcha. So the, the herpetitis water. Yeah, it's just activated herpes. Yep, we just, we just take, basically we take the herpes, right, which is normally very bad for you, and hepatitis, which you can, you know, normally die from. But then we activate it, and now it's good for your immune system. It's good for your immune system, and it makes you shit. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I've, I've heard people, like, take charcoal before they take molly. I guess that's kind of good for you. I don't know, man. What else can you activate? Can you activate at anything and make it good for you? That's a, that's a, that's a real fucking question. Like, why can't I just activate? Why can't I activate in and out and then it's just all of a sudden good for me? Yeah, can I get a uh, um, a double double, animal style, activated, please? <laughs> Uh, what am, what am I talking about? How would you even do that? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. What else has happened? Oh, so I did my training run last weekend or last week. Um, I know, did I talk about it? No, I didn't. I didn't. Me and Kelsey uh, recorded a little bit of the podcast and then we stopped and we restarted because she was like not in the camera and it was like kind of weird. So then we restarted and what we talked about was, uh, my training. So as some of you probably know, I'm doing a marathon, as all of you probably know, because I've talked about it for the last five episodes. I'm doing a marathon in uh, three weeks, to four weeks, I think, four weeks. No, three. Is it three? Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> three weeks. And I just haven't really been training as much as I should be. I just haven't really, I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but. Anyways, last week I had to do, I think I was going for 14 miles was what my training run was supposed to be. And um, I ran, I ended up running a half. I did 13.2 on Wednesday, but it was just fucking so miserable. I can't even describe it. I'm now, I'm taking these seriously now because I forgot how much energy it actually takes to run like a long training run like like this anyone who anyone who like runs long distances knows knows what i'm talking about there's a point in the run where it's like your stomach is completely empty because you've used all your calories and you just hit this fucking wall i guess would be the way to describe it that's actually a phrase used to describe i think the 20 mile mark in a marathon is usually when people hit the wall and it's basically just like this wall of exhaustion where you can't really do anything to to uh, regain any energy or anything. But now in these training runs, I'm hitting that around 10 miles and I, I'm not bringing out any food or anything. Which is normally like the last marathon I trained for, I took it really seriously and I bought these fucking energy gels that are basically just like um, like adult go Adult go Adult, sorry, that's, one, that's that one word that I keep fucking up. In Canada, we say adult. No, we say adult, sorry. Now, I, Jesus. In Canada, we say adult, and here we say adult. And so I still flip them back and forth. But um, So it's like these, these energy gels, they're like adult go They're just like have, they give you energy. The whole point is just to uh, replenish electrolytes and basically just give you calories so that you have energy to continue your run. So I used to carry these things around when I ran, when I did run, long training runs, and like 10 miles in, I would eat one, and it would just totally fix my tiredness. I would be regain a bunch of energy and, 
I was able to finish the run. But this time, and on top of that, I would like eat a lot of carbs the next day. And it would like, that shit actually makes a big difference. And I would rest up, get a good sleep. Like, I don't know, last Tuesday, I think I ate carbs, but just because I've been eating unhealthy recently (laughs) and then didn't have any gels or anything. So 10 miles in, it felt like I got hit by a bus. It just, oh man, I just remember thinking like, there's absolutely no way I can continue. I'm so tired that I cannot continue. There's nothing in my stomach. And I, can't, I was running down the boardwalk and the smell of like the hot dog stands and stuff like that and like the churros in Santa Monica were just, just wafting into my nose, finding their way directly into my nose. And I was so hungry. And I just, I didn't have any money. I didn't bring out anything. So I just knew I was still like four miles from home. And I knew just the next four miles were going to be so miserable. But it's one of those things. I think I said this in the, one of the very first episode, episodes of my podcast. But the way I get through really hard shit like that is I just convince myself I'm going to give up. And then I get to the point where I told myself I was going to give up. Like I go, okay, I'm just going to run 0.5 more miles. And then I can give up. But I'm not going to do the whole thing. And then I get to that point and my mind's like, no, no, you could do another 0.5, Right? Don't give up now. Just do another 0.5, but don't do the whole thing. You can give up in, in another 0.5. So I do that, and then, you know, I'm sure you can guess what I do next. So on and so forth until I've done the whole thing. And that's exactly what I did. I fucking, I was like, there's no way in fucking hell you're going to finish this. But, but, just go a little bit further. Go a little bit further. And then I got a little bit further, and I was like, listen, buddy, you don't have to finish. And I don't think you are going to finish, but you could go a little bit further. And uh, I ended up finishing the, I ended up finishing a half marathon. That's what, that's, that was my ultimate goal. And now tomorrow I got to do, I got to do what, like 15 or 16 miles. Oh man. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it, but I bought the, I bought the energy gels. I have the adult go-gurts. They taste like chocolate, some crazy flavor, like chocolate toboggan or something. (laughs) You know? You know, like, there was, oh, fucking, you know what the funniest shit is? This reminds me of this. Don Mazzetti. Don Mazzetti? Don Mazzetti, right? That's the guy. I used to watch him on YouTube when I was when I was younger. He's like the guy that did like the bro science. He's like the workout bro. Super funny dude. I used to watch him all the time in high school, I'm pretty sure. He was like the first YouTuber I actually like got into besides like Epic Meal Time, I guess was the other one. Um, Remember when they were popular back, back in the day? Uh, but Don Mazzetti has protein powders, I guess. Or no, he's got pre-workouts. He sells his own brand of pre-workout. And the flavors are insane. One of the... F- God damn it, I gotta look this up because it's so funny. Oh, one of them is house music. <laughs> That's a flavor of pre-workout. House music. What does house music taste like? I gotta check what the other ones are. Dom Mazzetti. Oh, the third thing that comes up is net worth. I gotta. I want to be at the point where that comes up for me. When you Google my name, pre-workout, Brosups, it's called. Narp introducing Narpump. Wait, I gotta see. Gain here. Bro, bro science, 50% facts, 50% magic, 100% results. Okay, so yeah, we got, okay. Okay, these are the flavors. These are the, fla- <laughs> these are the flavors of the Narpump pre-workout. We have house music, which I've already mentioned. Optimus Lime. Komodo Dragon. <laughs> Optimus Lime. Oh my god, fucking house music, house music. I've been thinking about buying some pre-workout though. Should I get some of this shit? Damazetti, shout out to you. If you're watching this, can you send me some of your pre-workout? I want a NAR pump. I want to be a NAR pump. I want to know what a Komodo dragon tastes like. What is that? What is that? What does that taste like? What the fuck could that possibly be? I don't know. I want to taste it. I want pre-workout. Isn't pre-workout just like fucking amphetamines? Isn't it just like basically like like a like a legal form of meth people do before they work out? 
I saw like a, like a, like a meme or something on Twitter. And it was like, it was like 15 minutes after you take your pre-workout and it was like someone shitting. And it's like, yeah, but that, that kind of reminds me what, of what amphetamines does, right? Isn't that just what pre-workout is? It's just like legal drugs. I guess coffee does that too. It's like an upper thing, right? Is that right? I think someone told me that one time that uppers make you shit because everything in your system is kind of moving faster. I really don't know if that's true. That's just some bro science right there. <laughs> that's 50% facts, 50% magic, 100% house music, baby. <laughs> house music. What the fuck does that taste like? What does that taste like? House music. Tastes like bass. So funny. And then what else did I do this week? So I did the training run on Wednesday. It was fine. Thursday, what did I do on Thursday? Anything? Shot a video maybe? Edited? Because I posted a new video on my main channel on uh, on on Thursday, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one, the one where I talk about that Zach Clayton dude, his music video. Basically, he did this diss track as like this 14-year-old kid or something. I don't know, man. Kids these days have... <laughs> Fuck. God fucking damn it. I, here comes the old jokes. I just, I wish to God the old jokes would stop. And then I just say shit like that. And it's like, well, there's another two weeks of them. But it's just seriously, kids these days, man. Kids these days. I post, so, the, so, so I, I posted this video talking about this diss track that this kid named Zach Clayton posted about Daniel Bragoli, who's the Catch Me Outside girl. I don't know. The whole thing is kind of confusing to me. I just thought the video was pretty funny. And so I did a video about the video because I wanted to write about it and I thought it was funny. And it's this kid, I think he's 17. And so he does this diss track, right? But his friends are in the video. His friends are all like you nowers and musically stars, which if you don't know what that shit is, then look that up. Um, you're, you know, a little bit too far gone for me to describe that right now. But it's basically these kids, social media stars on networks you've probably never heard of if you're above the age of 23. So, uh... They're in the background of this video, and I comment on it. And I'm like, this kid in the right, this kid in the left, he's wearing this like bait hoodie, the one that zips all the way up the front, and he looks like he's eight years old. He straight up looks like he's eight. He just looks like he's young. And I'm like, what are you doing in a diss track video? I didn't even know what the fuck a diss track was when I was eight. I later found out the kid's 15 or 14 or something. But even then, what the fuck is a diss track? There's a picture of me that I posted on my Instagram. It's me on like a bike. And I have these stupid, sh I posted it yesterday on my main Instagram account. It, someone tweeted at me and, uh, or tweeted at me, like it's from one of my dad's blog posts a long time ago. And they found it and they tweeted it at me. And I saw this picture of myself. I was like, this is hilarious. And I posted it because I look so absurd. I'm riding a bike and I have this like stooshy shirt with all these weird autographs on it. And I'm wearing these like god awful rainbow shorts. That just like, I don't know. They're like Rasta. Sh I don't even know what they're fucking, what I was going for with those shorts. Totally rainbow shorts. Probably wearing some, probably wearing Circa shoes. I'm riding this bike and I just look dumb. I look dumb. I just look like I'm, I look, I look like a 14 year old. Doesn't really know what's going on. 15 maybe. And I posted it and then I realized like, holy fuck. That was me at that age. That was me. That's what I looked like. These kids, look at what they're doing. They're, they're wearing bape hoodies, doing diss tracks about other people and posting them on YouTube and getting millions of views. What was I doing? I was, I was contemplating which rainbow shorts to buy. I Riding bikes with my family. It's just so weird, the difference, man. The kids these days. That's truly, I say that and it makes, it sound, makes me sound old, but it's true. Kids these days. What's going on? And I found out a bunch of shit when my friends texted me. I'm not going to like say anything, but I'm not, I'm not going to like, literally I looked at this kid. I thought he was eight years old. Right. And then like, no, no, no hate on this kid, whatever. 15 years. I'm saying you got a baby face. You'll hit puberty eventually. But I, and then one of my friends texted me a whole bunch of shit about this kid. You know what? I don't know. Like it just, he likes to party and all this stuff. I was just like, what the fuck are kids doing these days? Like, how fast are you growing up? What's going to happen when you're my age? What are you going to want to do if you're already doing everything? I don't know, man. Crazy. Um, 
What else is good? Should we do should we do some voicemails? I think we should. Um last time or a couple days ago, I was like, I want to do voicemail hour again. So I tweeted and I was like, guys, does anyone want to do a jingle for voicemail hour? Basically, I want to like do obviously I mean obviously I didn't invent this fucking idea, but people do jingles for the segments in the podcast. And uh so I thought I want to make a jingle for a uh, voicemail hour and I was going to do it. And then I, and I was kind of like, maybe I'm going to let someone else do it. So here I asked someone to do it and someone tweeted at me. And so and they tweeted a Snapchat of them playing the jingle. And I haven't, I have yet to get the actual file from them, um, but it's fucking hysterical. So I'm just going to play it like this. Um, his name is at Patrick and MW. Um, and uh, this is hilarious. So thank you. I'm going to yawn real quick. Take a sip of my coffee. Ah, um, listen to this shit, though. Listen to this. So this is the official start of Voicemail Hour with Cody Co. It's time for voicemails from the Shortsters. Bitch. Voicemails from the Chodesters, bitch. <laughs> ah, that's great. Thank you, Patrick Gilchrist. I'm gonna get the actual file from you, and so I can play that every time. So today, I asked for people to basically, I asked for people to leave voicemails and ask me for advice on shit. Um. I think someone else has a podcast like this. Maybe like Megan Ranks or someone has a podcast where they do this. And uh, someone told me one time, but I, I, I like the idea, so I'm going to do it. But shout out to, you know, the person who actually does this or who who this, I don't know. We're all about stealing ideas today, I guess. Also, I tweeted, I don't know, I was like, hey, uh, about to do voicemail hour, um, Ask me something you want advice on. And Noel tweeted, how do I get a job? I said, just don't get fired from the last one. <laughs> so sorry, Noel. Sorry about that. Um, but let's listen to some damn voicemails right now. Let's give some advice to people. The problem is I get so many people. I get I have 368 right now. Um, so I'm going to wait. My phone kind of fucks up sometimes and doesn't actually download them. So while I'm doing this guys, uh, it is, it's at insanely underscore chill is the Twitter. And that's where I post about, uh, I post the number to which you should call in. And so if you're not following the Twitter account, then you're going to miss it. Um, and then the people who are actually call are the people who, uh, pledge to my Patreon. So if you want to be someone I call in the next episode or whenever I do that next, um, go ahead and contribute to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Cody Co. Thank you so much, gang. All right, let's get into this. Um, so honestly, I can't remember if you've answered this question already or not, mm-hmm. but I just want to know what was the first place that you traveled to alone and what are some tips that you have for like traveling by yourself versus like traveling with other people? So yeah, that's all I have to say. Love the podcast. I've listened to every episode. I've called in a bunch of times and you've never listened to my voicemail. All right. So hopefully you'll hear this one. Well, yeah. What's but, up now? Yeah. I love you. Bye. I don't know. Do I? Oh, oh, okay. Well, pull my own ending on myself there. So thanks for that. But uh, no, thanks. Thanks for the kind words, by the way. I appreciate the fact that you're a listener and that you've listened to every episode. Actually, that's very commendable. Um, we should have like a fucking award for that or something. Someone can prove to me that they've listened to every single episode. I will send you a free hoodie. Maybe. I still, I still have yet to do merch for the podcast. I'm thinking about it right now, but I'll send you something for free. If you can prove you've listened to every single episode somehow. I don't know. Screenshot your podcast app or something. Okay, the first place I traveled to by myself. Um, Jesus, what was it? I know in the last episode I said I like traveling by myself, and I actually do. Um, I'm trying to think. The very I don't know what the very first place was. 
I, I haven't really traveled abroad by myself. It's only really been in America, in America for like work or something. But honestly, I, I really, I like being by myself. And so when I travel by myself, I, I just like walk around and I just do exactly what I want to do, which is, I think that's, I, this is kind of obvious as I'm saying it, but it's like, that is the biggest benefit to traveling by yourself is doing exactly what it is you want at whenever you want. You have no one else to answer to. You don't have to worry about what else anyone wants to do. So if you want to, if you don't want to fucking see temples and you want to just sit in your hotel room, if that's something that, that pleases you, then just fucking do that shit. Um, and it's also like your, your lighter weight, you can move around easier. So try, you know, a bunch of places. Like, I don't know when I go somewhere alone, I just, I tend to just like walk around. And just like think and enjoy it. I don't know. I, I really don't have any like great advice about that. I, I Again, I said in the last episode that I like traveling alone, but I haven't truly done it. Like my friend Alex has actually like been to, you know, obviously he was in the Peace Corps, but he's like been to, he's been on vacations by himself before. I don't think I've ever done that. I don't think. So I'm a fraud basically is what I'm saying. I'm a fucking fraud. But I will do it one day and uh, we'll compare notes. How about that? Thanks again for the kind words. I appreciate you. Hi, Cody. This is Amanda. Don't hate me. I'm not calling to ask for advice or to ask a question. I just want to be well, super head ass and say that I'm really happy for you and Kelsey. It's amazing that you found someone who actually can put up with you because I know that must be really hard for her. <laughs> no, in Fuck all you. seriousness, I know you act like a douche 90% of the time, but we all know you secretly have a big heart and I'm glad that you found someone to share your love with. All right. Have a good podcast. See you later. <laughs> fucking lame <laughs> so lame such a lame voicemail it was lame no thank you thank you all right fine that meant a lot to me appreciate that amanda thanks let's move on i'm happy let's move on what's up guys what's Cody, up guys i need your advice i've been talking to this guy okay. for a, for a little bit and i'm wondering how early is too early to start making Vine references and <laughs> meme references in our conversations because kind of a deal breaker if he was to be like what <laughs> is that what does that say about a guy okay if he doesn't get the meme references okay thanks the ending of voicemail is so awkward okay oh bye. god <laughs> bad ending Oh, great question. Great, great question there. Um, now, this is, this is what I say. This is what I got to say. I think, I think if he doesn't understand meme references, you got you to gotta make sure it's right off the bat. You do. You got to make sure. And I'm not, talking, I'm not talking fuck Jerry memes. Don't send him shitty memes. Because if he doesn't like shitty memes, you know, if you send him something and he's like, what? Then, then marry him. You know, if you send some stupid meme off Twitter or something and he, but you got to, what, what I, what I think you got to do is you got to find the ones that you both connect on. You know, you got to find those. You got to have a conversation and be like, you know, what do you, you know, oh, I used to love that guy on, on Vine or I used to whatever. And then you got to connect on that. And then afterwards you got to test him a little bit by, by, uh, by using the phrase just to make sure he's actually, he actually means it, you know? And if he gets it, then he's a keeper. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying right now. I have no idea if that helps or not. Um, I'm like I I want to say I'm not a big fan of memes, but I I fuck around with memes and shit all the time, and I do laugh at the occasional meme. So what does it say about him if he doesn't like memes? I don't know. I don't have enough information because he could actually really like. He could like things that are actually cool. Hope that helped. <laughs> Didn't help at all, probably. Oh, this is the waveform for this one is intimidating. Let's check it out. Hey, Cody, it's Ian. Uh, fuck wow. you, man. Okay, good. Good, Ian. You know what? Fuck you too, man. <laughs> yep, that's right. Take that, little bitch. Let's see what else we got. I'm going to scroll down. So you got people in the middle. Hey, it's Mia. I left a voicemail earlier, but I forgot to mention that I'm from Orlando, and I know you hate it, but you should still come to do the podcast with Noel. Nope, absolutely not. 
Never, ever going back to Orlando unless I absolutely have to. Dude, last time I went to Orlando, I was fucking in a rainforest cafe. The day that my flight left, just killing time on the Dis- on the Disney walk or whatever. The walk, I don't even know what it is. It's just like a walk full of fucking stores. There's a rainforest cafe there. And I went there. And I was just sad. You know, it's a rainforest cafe. While I'm killing time in Orlando. I love Rainforest Cafe. I do. But like in Orlando, just killing time before my flight so I could get the fuck out of there. Before you know you already have a five-hour flight back to LA. Fuck off, man. No way. Never going back. What the fuck is up, Cody? What's up, guys? My name is Grace, and I'd like to know. How many zans? Too many zans until I can't feel my own ass. Also, how dare you appropriate my culture and call yourself a hairy stand, man? But you're better than that. Well, anyways, hope you're doing well. Tell Kelsey I say hi. Okay, I'll let her know. Um, yeah, uh, yo, it's a good, it's a good, good question. No, it's not. It's not a good question at all. Actually, bad question. But I'll answer anyways. How many Zans is too many Zans? Um, a Zan. Don't do any Zans. Don't do Zans. They're bad. Don't do them recreationally. If you need it, if you need to do it sometimes for a flight or for a fucking because you're anxious or whatever, then sure. But don't do them rec- recreationally. It's dangerous. You can get caught up in that shit. Um, as for what was the second part? Oh, Harry Stan. I'm not appropriating shit. I actually am a Harry Styles fan, although I'm not the biggest one. I know, like, it's crazy because I won't hear some shit about Harry Styles for a little while, and then he'll do something. Like, he, like now he's on tour, I guess, by himself. And the only reason I know that is because my Twitter feed is just entirely flooded with people tweeting about Harry Styles and the freaking the fuck out about his show, the crying, and these are all people that have. Like a lot of who, who do their own shit and have like a lot of followers by themselves. Like the person specifically that I'm thinking about right now, and this is no no shade at all, but it's Sarah Baska. I follow her. I think she's hilarious, right? And she's very successful in her own right. But it's just weird seeing people that are so successful and who have a lot of fans be such a fan about somebody else. Like she straight up like retweeted Harry Styles and was like crying about his like fucking solo performance because she was at the show just like like a. You know, again, no shade at all. But when I read the tweet, I was like, oh, this is like a 13 year old girl tweeting about Justin Bieber or something. But it, it was her. And in my, I don't know, I like in my, I, I see her as a comedian fucking crying over Harry Styles. And I was just like, this is weird, man. Harry Styles is just like a whole nother, whole nother class. You know, people just, he's a, I don't know. You know how like Bill Burr, they say he's the comedian's comedian because comedians like him. I feel like Harry Styles is like the artist's artist. <laughs> not really, but it just feels like everyone likes him, no matter who you are. And I do like him. I'm just not, not that big of a fan. Hey, Trody. Um, I called before, but I'm at work, and so somebody came in, and I got in trouble. But I wanted to know how I can get a job like yours, because it doesn't seem like you do shit. All right, well, uh, thanks. Bye. I was talking about this with uh, someone the other day. Um because because every time now I tell someone now, I think I saw like one of my best friends from home and he was like, he he was in town. Um, this is like one of my friends from Calgary that I used to hang out with a lot. He was in town in LA and uh, he he texted me. He said like, hey dude, I'm going to be in town these four days. Like maybe we can hang out on Thursday night or something. And it was like one of the nights, I think I had an audition on Friday and last Friday. And uh, also was going to post a video and also was like planning on recording a podcast or something. And so I was just like, I had a lot of shit to do. And I was like, I can't, man, I, I, I got to work. And he knows now that I do this instead of what I used to do. And he was like, what work? You don't have a job. And I kind of like, haha, you know, when, when that shit happens, I kind of laugh at it. And, you know, I say I even say that shit about myself. I'm like, I don't have a job. But it's like I work now way more than I used to for sure. And I but I love the shit out of it. But. You know, people, I, and I used to be like this too, actually, when I used to just do Vine. I used to like think about YouTubers and be like, ah, they're fucking, their shit's so easy. They, they don't deserve to, to make this amount of money that they're making. They don't deserve that shit. Like people work their ass off nine to fives and cubicles and whatever. I got to say now that I'm doing it and then like, now that I know like the full, and some, some of them that is true. Some of them that's definitely true. But now that I realize the editing process, what it takes to actually create something that you are proud enough to put out there on YouTube and um, 
I don't know. I respect I respect the the YouTube grind now, I guess. God, that's fucking lame to say that, but I definitely do. And so I think right now I do work more than I used to as a software engineer, even though I had a great job before. So I guess what I would say is be careful what you wish for. But if you want to do this stuff, you got to fucking go heads down on it. You got to try. And the the biggest thing is that don't, I would say don't give up, if that makes any sense. If you really think that you have, I guess it's it's easier for me to say that because I already knew that I had something going on with Vine, right? I had a lot of followers on Vine. I did something right there. I started with zero followers. I ended up with almost 3 million. So I was doing something right. So I already had like a little bias that like maybe another form of social media would be good for me. So when I started YouTube, I already had that in my mind that like hey, maybe if I worked hard enough at it, I'll find that voice again and I'll be able to to succeed. But there was periods where like I was posting vlogs three times a week and it just like wasn't, the views like weren't going up and I was just doing it. And you go through periods where it's like disheartening, right? And that's, I think that's for any creative field. I've talked about this before, but there's ebbs and flows. It's like, you know, and you got to just fucking keep going. You got to learn from the past things, learn what works, learn what doesn't adapt and keep going. And eventually I think if you work hard enough at it, you know, it'll, it'll work out hopefully, or you'll see some sort of success, whatever that may be. You know, I, th- I think a lot of people like, they'll like, ah, like for me, started this podcast back in January. I was like, this will be good to talk about what's up. And I think like, you know, this will be a thing that's successful for me, like right off the bat, but you know, it just wasn't. And it's still technically not successful for me in terms of like, you know, monetization. And, and by the way, that's like, that's a thing that's happening now. I just, um, I, uh, I, 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 I don't know when I was going to talk about this, but I actually got an offer from, um, a big, uh, one of the biggest podcast ad networks, which is fucking great. So now, now it's like, this is something that's, you know, I can have deemed relatively successful for me, but it's taken what it's been like, I don't know what, nine months or something since, since January, you know, that working my ass off on this stuff. And, uh, again, I love doing it. It's great work, but, and some people work even longer on this shit before it's ever, um, before everything, anything ever happens. But I just think, you know, you got to keep going at it. That's guy. I guess that's my advice with acting. I haven't booked anything since last October and I'm working, I'm going to class, I'm working on it and it's fucking, sometimes it's like, fuck, maybe I should just quit acting. Why am I, why am I focusing on it if it's not doing anything for me right now? But I think a little part of me is like, no, you keep going. You'll get some, you'll find something that's right. So that's my advice. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so I have like this really fun story to tell you. Um, So basically at our apartment complex, there's like two cats and they're both all black cats. And one of them, he's really cool. His name is Cher from Arrow. If you get the joke, that's cool, I guess. Um, And then other one's pillow face. Don't don't get it. And I don't know how to, he just has a pillow face, I guess. And like they fight each other all the time. We feed them, give them water, you know. Um, just also, if you're at the end of this, which I doubt you listened to all of this, uh, that was Colby on the weekend edition podcast. That was the fucking story. Oh my God. You said it was a funny story. What the goddamn shit was that? I didn't really listen to it, to be honest. (laughs) So it might've been funny, but, and yeah, I'll get Colby on the weekend edition. Maybe that's who I'll have this weekend. Um, if you want anyone else tweet that at me, um, because yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get people, but yeah. Let me know. Cody, what the fuck is up? What's this up, guys? Is Maya, and um, I'm a senior in high school, and I'm wondering, how do I just stop procrastinating and just do shit? Okay, thanks. Peace. I don't know, man. That It's tough because I have, I have trouble with that, too. For me, it's like I have trouble starting something. Once I start, like once I sit down, once I sit down on my computer, I will do everything but open up Premiere to edit. And as soon as I open up Premiere, I'm in it, and I'm fucking focused, and I can do it for hours, but... So I have no advice on that because I'm bad at it too. All right, let's see what else we got here, baby. Hey, Cody, it's Olivia. Um, What's up, guys? You know, I've just been wondering lately, you know, you're getting really old, but like you just can't really tell. Like what kind of wrinkle cream do you use? Like how do you think I should? Hey, Cody, um, do you think I should get my nipples pierced or, you know, should I just get one or should I get my tongue pierced? I want to be really edgy and cool like you. Okay, thanks. Bye. I don't have my nipples pierced. All right, this is a weird one for me to answer because I don't know how old you are. But me, 
personally, I think the double nipple piercing on girls is attractive. I think that's hot when they have two or one, but I like it when they have two or one, either or, but I like it. I think I like it better when they have two. So fucking do it if you're thinking about doing that. So this is a suggestion. There's a YouTuber. I think she's about 16. Her name's Emma Chamberlain. I'm not her, by the way. I'm just a fan of her. And she is literally you, but as a 16 <laughs> What the fuck happened there? Okay, Emma Chamberlain. I'm going to check her out after this. Thanks for, the, thanks for the suggestion there. Hey, Cody. It's Francie. Hey, what's up, Francie? What's up, guys? I was wondering if you had any, any advice on how to ease the transition from college to the real world. I just graduated a few months ago, and I'm really struggling. Would be much appreciated. Thank you. Bye. What did I do? Man, I w- it's tough for me to really um, actually give real advice on that because I, I had the weirdest transition out of college. The weirdest transition out of college. Picture this. I, and I'm sure some of you guys know this already, but I'm, I'm whatever, 21, right? Wasn't applying for jobs senior year of college because my competition schedule with diving was like a little bit too intense. And I, I say that that's kind of an excuse. It was, it is true, but it's, it's still kind of an excuse. I still could have been done in, doing shit. Um, but instead what I did is I taught myself how to write apps and I wrote an app and released it and it basically went viral as soon as we were all graduating. So the week after we all graduated, we, uh, or the week after finals, we would all, we'd do beach week. We would go out to Wilmington in North Carolina and we'd rent a big house and we'd just party for like a four days or something. And while that was happening, my app was number one in the app store. It was like one of the craziest moments of my entire life. Meanwhile, a company hit me up. It was a startup in Silicon Valley and they offered to fly me out. So I flew out and basically signed an agreement that said they would buy the app from me and hire me in the process. So I moved right from Duke to Palo Alto, California by myself. I knew nobody. Palo Alto is like a college town. It's like one of the main towns in Silicon Valley. It's where Stanford is. It's just not really a social town for a 21-year-old that just moved from the other side of the country who knows nobody. And so I like it just had this weird, I don't even know. I was I was working for a startup, so I was working really long hours. They were basically my only friends, it was like my boss and my um my CEO. So I would hang out with them all the time. And I don't know. I was I was I was pretty lonely. I was doing well and I had a project to work on and I was like working really hard. So that helped was like having something to actually work on, whether that be a new job or a new relationship or something, I guess. So that helped. Um, And then eventually, like I moved up up to San Francisco when my friend moved there and we moved moved in together. And that was that's when my life actually became like good again. (laughs) So I had a really weird transition. It just wasn't normal. I didn't you know, I didn't have the normal job of like you know, a lot of my friends that joined these big companies and they had like automatic friend groups because, you know, there's a lot of kids coming into the company that were the same age and like Microsoft and shit like that, but I never had that. So I don't know that probably doesn't help, but that just told you my story and didn't, (laughs) didn't give you any advice, but I don't know, join some shit, go to cycling class. It's one thing I've realized is like whenever I'm like, actually feel like nothing's really going on. I just, I do shit. Like, you know, I've met friends now through my acting class. And if you do more shit like that, I feel like I feel like it's you know it'll be easier for you. Let's um guys, I uh, I feel like I'm just like really not even giving good advice. So let's just do a couple more, and I gotta go too. So um, hey, what's good, Cody? What's up, Doc? Um, what's up, guys? I'm currently a senior in high school, uh, going to college next year, and I just want some advice on rushing a frat. Um, so yeah, just let me know. Be yourself, man. Just be yourself. No, I'm kidding. Fit in, you know. Be cool. <laughs> um. I don't know. I don't even remember what the fuck I did when I was rushing. I think I was such an idiot, but it worked out. I don't know. Yeah, to be yourself. Fucking make friends with make friends with people and hit them up. Hit up the dudes. Hit up the brothers and be like, hey man, want to get lunch? You know, if you like a frat, like really try and get to know them and um, I don't know, prove that you provide value and whatnot. Um, guys, my camera battery is dying. Let's do one more and then we can wrap things up. Hey there, Cody. Um, Quick question. How do I accumulate a photo of your penis? All right. See you later. Bye. Yeah, I just uh, hit up my manager 
And uh, no, actually don't. Please don't do that because I know some of you will actually email her asking for my dick pics and that wouldn't be good because I don't even, first of all, I don't think she has any. And second of all, she might get a little bit freaked out by that. So don't do that. Um, but uh, yeah, so probably never going to see um, a picture of my dick, I guess, you know, by my own, it's not going to be me sending it to you. Um, hopefully you'll never see a picture of my dick, but, uh, and anyways, why are we talking about my dick? I'm gonna wrap things up guys. Thanks for so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. Uh, if you like it, go ahead and, you know, subscribe on iTunes, please. And, uh, rate it five stars. That would help me out a lot. And, uh, tell your friends about it. If you're in a group chat with people that, you know, send it to them, share it. Let's get this out there. And, um, you know, go ahead and, uh, contribute on Patreon, please guys. That would, that would, that means the world to me when people do that shit. Or you can book me on Cameo if you want to support me. It's bookcameo.com slash Cody Co. Personalized video message straight to you. Um, let's see, what else can I plug? Follow the pl- Twitter at insanely underscore chill. And go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's at Cody Co. And, uh, you know, just keep it, keep it real, you guys. Keep it fucking real. Make sure you drink some herpetitis water this week and I will catch you guys next week. I love you. Do I? I don't know.